All right, folks, we're going to go a little further. In this segment of the video, uh, we're going to take the pump and the valve that we're using, and we're going to create them or, or make them reusable items that you can use over and over again. In this case, we're going to do what's we're going to call what's uh, what's called widgetize. We're going to widgetize these items. What does it mean to be a widget? Well, if I go over here to the right and go to primitives, and if I go to home directory primitives, and uh, let's say for instance I look at indicators, for instance, there's a bunch of lights in here, or uh, if I go into gauges, there's all these gauges in here. We played with this earlier. You can think about all these things really being pre-built widgets or items that are already set up here in Crimson. What we want to do is we want to make the pump and the valve items we have on, on our screen be completely reusable widgets as well. So if you notice here on my Crimson, uh, I've got below Legacy, I've got button widgets, and I have a category just called widgets, which inside widgets are going to be a bunch of things. Now, if this is the first time you ever create a widget, you won't have any of these categories. And don't uh, freak out about that, but if you've ever made a widget before, you'd have something here. But if you haven't, that's why these categories don't exist. When we get done with this, you will have a category called widgets. So, let's go ahead and first uh, take the pump that we did, and we're going to widgetize this guy. So, watch what I do here. On the pump, I'm going to right-click on it. I'm going to right-click, and the fourth option from the bottom here is the word widgetize. So I'm going to click on the word widgetize, and it brings up this window right here. Now, when I'm teaching the widgets, I always like to make sure that the student sees the item or items over in this small window. So I see there's my pump. That's perfect. Um, you can see also right now, it says this widget has no data items. Well, we know, team, that everything in here is associated with one tag called pump. So what we're going to do is we're going to declare a widget tag here that resides within this graphic or this this so far primitive when we get done. So I'm going to click the button here for definition, click edit, and that brings up this pop-up right here. And this is, keep in mind, this pop-up is in front of this. I just want to point that out to you. This is in front of this thing right here. And again, we know that everything currently that's in here is associated with one tag called pump. So I'm going to click the edit button right here for the count, which brings this little pop-up. And I'll put a number one in, and I'll click the OK button. And now I get this section right here for definitions. So uh, one thing I like about Crimson is at this juncture, it lets you see over in the right side here all of your tags. Now, I am going to name the widget tag right here. I'm going to name the widget tag. Ironically, I'm going to name it the same as this tag here because later on, we're going to have all these tags and folders, and the goal might be for us to grab a whole folder of tags onto our whole thing and have it connect to everything in here. So right here where it says name, I look over here and I see the name of the tag there is pump. So I'm going to manually type the word pump here, right there. doesn't have to be capitalized the same, but it has to be spelled the same. Now a lot of people in class, let me just put in some whatever mumbo jumbo here. A lot of people in class will say, well, heck, why don't I just drag this guy? You know, I've been talking about drag and dropping. Why don't I just drag it right here? Well, if you notice, as I try to do this, Crimson here at the widget definition section, it doesn't let you do that because if you did, you just took this graphic and you hard coded it or hard welded it to that tag level. So that's why it doesn't let you do that. So I'm going to manually type the word pump here. The description is nothing more than a text box. So in this case, I'm going to put here, uh, I might type the word pump tag. You'll see how that shows up here in a little bit. Ah, the data type. Now this is interesting. Uh, when we declared the tags, any of the flag tags are booleans. They're on off booleans. Anything with an X is an integer. Of course, a pi is a floating point or a real number. So if you look here in the data type when I hit the pull down, I don't see an option to pick a bool type here. Well, that's because the boolean integer, or boolean on off, is part of the integer family. So I'll select an integer. And then the flags category, basically that says, how will this pump tag interact eventually with the real world tag? Well, since this guy is uh, red, 
that means it's writable. So I'm going to hit the edit button here. I'm going to choose writable. But then, of course, I want this to show if something else ever changes this in my code. I want this to show. So the word tag here, I wish it had like a hyphen readable here because that's what that means. So that makes it a readable and writable the fact that we're going to change it. So we'll click OK. Now, the last part of this team that's uh, interesting is I'm going to turn on folder binding right here where it says folder binding. I'm going to go ahead and enable folder binding. And I want you to notice right now, none of my tags over here are nested in any folders. They're all at the root directory, even though there is a there is a folder right here, team. But that's just really a divider between some stuff. It's not nothing's actually in there. Everything's at the root directory. So I'm going to turn on folder binding here and click the OK button, which brings me back to this page, which is a second ago we were we were in front of here. If I click the edit, if I click the edit here, come on. This is the pop-up that's in front of here. So when I click the OK, it brings me back to here. Now, I want you to notice something. I'm going to click OK this last time, and I want to see if anything changes. I don't know if it will, but I'll click OK here. Boom. Oh, something weird did change. The graphic went to this gray color. It's no longer red or green. It went to this gray. Well, what happened here is this graphic that was connected to the tag called pump here now suddenly got cut off. And this graphic is now connected to a tag in the graphic called pump. So it's not connected to here anymore. It's connected to itself. Now, in this state right here, the state that it's in right here, I'm going to go to the, uh, let me click on it here. I'll click on, whoops, I'll click on it one time. I'm going to go to the organize pull down menu, go to the organize pull down. And with it selected, meaning I get the red border, with it selected with the red border, I'm going to click save widget. Now, Sometimes people have this with the green border, and this happens a lot in class, and they go organize, pull down, and everything's grayed out. That's because the green border means that you accidentally are working with an element inside of this grouping. And so it's we want to have the red border where we're holding it. So the biggest shortcut I can teach people is to use your escape key on your laptop until you get the red border. Once you get the red border, you'll see down here, it even says untitled widget selected. So with the red border, go to the Organize pull down and click Save Widget. Uh, here's another caveat. you got to put it in this default directory. Yet today, we don't have a way to tell Crimson where to look at other directories for these widget files. So it has to go into this hidden directory. Don't put it somewhere else because Crimson right now is not going to see it. So let it go where it wants to. Kind of like that Disney show, let it go, let it go. Anyway, so down here, I'm going to type uh, My Pump, for instance. And I'll hit save. And I already had one, but I'll just go ahead and overwrite and hit save. And once you get done with that procedure uh, there being saved, to try this out, you can actually just delete it from the page. Now, don't freak out because there is an undo button right here. This is an undo button. But with that thing deleted, team, you should be able to go over to primitives on the right. Whoop, go to primitives. You should have a category called widgets. And when you click on the widgets category, of course, you're only going to have one, so it's going to show up right away. Mine takes forever to load the 50,000 that I have in here. And inside here, you'll see your pump widget. My pump. That's my valve. I don't think it's going to be. It's not going to be. There it is right there. There it is. Well, that's not the one. I had it called it my pump today, didn't I? Right here. There it is. So what you're going to do is you're going to drag this guy back out here just like you had before. I'll kind of just set it in the same spot. And then to reconnect this to the tag, all you got to do, team, is right-click and go to Properties. Right-click and go to Properties. And you're just going to grab the pump tag from here and put it right into here. So when I grab pump and drag it right here, boom, boom, that covered my uh, action tab for there using pump. And it covered my coloring for this guy. So that's good. I'll click the OK button there. Let's do the same thing since we're doing this widgets. Let's do the same thing now on our uh, valve over here, just so you get a chance to build another one. So I'm going to right-click on the valve, and I'm going to go to the fourth thing from the bottom and click Widgetize. Once again, it says this widget has no date items. We know that this guy is interacting with one tag called valve. So I'm going to click the Edit button right here. 
I'm going to click the edit button here for count, and I'm going to declare a widget tag. Boom. This allows me to declare a widget tag. And I'm going to call this tag valve right here. So I'll highlight this field, type valve. And of course, the description, I can type valve uh, bull flag tag. Oops, flag tag. I'll show you. I didn't say this earlier, but I'll show you how that shows up. Once again, this is a Boolean or a flag tag. So when I hit the pull down, it's part of the integer family. So I'll choose integer. And then over here for the flags, since this is a red, it means it's definitely writable. And we're going to set up as a tag so it's readable. So I'll hit the edit button here. And I'll choose tag, which means write readable. I wish we had a hyphen here that said readable. And then I'll click the tag writable because if I click on it, I'm going to change it. So I'll do that. Click OK. And then the last part is the folder binding. I'm doing this to make that graphic get disconnected from this guy and it gets connected to this tag which resides in the graphic. So I'm going to turn on folder binding. Go ahead and click the OK button. Which brings back here. Look, there's that description. I was talking about valve, bull, flag tag. There's that description text. Once again, I'm going to click the OK button. And let's see if this guy changes. I don't know if it will or not, but I'll click it. One, two, three, boom. Hey, look. It turned to the on state. Ooh, interesting. All right. So now that I got in this state right here, I'm going to go to the Organize Pull Down, Save Widget. And I'll call this one My Valve, for instance. Oops, can't really spell Valve today. All right. I'll overwrite it. Now, now that I've saved it, well, so I think anyway. So, uh, over here in widgets, I think it's currently updating. So that's why I had it open here. But uh, it's either all the way down here. That's not it. It's probably going to be right up here, right here. There it is right there. It's the same thing. It's already in the screen. Anyway, uh, I'm going to right click on it on the screen here and go to properties. And I need to reconnect this guy. I need to reconnect this graphic to the tag called valve. So I'm going to simply drag the valve tag from here. Boom. Right to there. And that connects it. Click OK. And then I'll go ahead and save this program. Let's test it to make sure it still works the same. Go ahead and download it. And let's see. So if I open my valve, hey, clicked on it. It turned it. That looks perfect. And of course, if I click on my motor or my pump, that fills it up. Perfect. Looks good. All right. We'll continue on here in the next video. But that we did two widgets there. Our pump and our valve. We're going to eventually widgetize this whole thing a little bit, but we're going to add a few more graphics to this. So we'll continue on here.